us and, and the collaboration we're going to have going forward. No better way to communicate to your audience. How do we grow strategically now that we've gotten the right path forward? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Agents Who Win Friday show. I want to welcome Phil Duke Jr. here with First Class Realty. And I wanted to talk to Phil today about working with recruits and bringing in three to five agents per month to the brokerage or team. There's a lot of movement right now in the industry and everyone's freaking out. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And, you know, brokers are letting agents go because they're not producing or they've struggled the last six months and they're trying to find a home. So I think this is a great topic, you know, Phil, and thank you for being here. But like, how do we, um, you know, attract those agents to our teams that seem to be struggling somewhere else, but you know, how do we get them over here? So I'm excited to kind of talk about this and dive in and, and what your secrets are. Yeah, man, absolutely. Thanks for having me on here. Yeah. And you know, it's a, it's a exciting time to be in the industry. There is a lot of shake up right now. And, <laughs> and I think the path we're going is going to be the right one, but, but I guess time, time will tell, but typically, you know, the, the brokerages and the teams that have the agents have the production are the ones yeah. that, that survive. And so it's a very, very, it's always been an important topic, but I think it'll be even more important going forward. Now, in one of the, um, I was listening to Coach Burt last week at our conference that we had, and his comment was, if you want to make money, you got to lead with people. The more people you have, the more money you're going to make. You can't, you know, keep reducing and, and making the others work harder. You've got to attract the people if you're going to make the money. And that's a big topic right now. So it's like, how do we build our brokerages? You know, I think we can recruit three to five agents a month all day long. Hey, come work for me. But it's how to find those right ones. So Let's talk about some strategies on how to find those right agents and then the value prop that we're going to use to bring them to us and, you know, keep them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah, this is a great topic to start with. Um, you know, so many people out there, um, you know, have a specific type of agent they're looking for. And it's something I've I've been coaching even some of our leaders on as well. Um, you know, I, I have my ideal, you know, uh, agent that I'm looking for, the things that I look for. But, you know, I, I think one thing, thing that's really important to realize as you're recruiting people is if you have figured out the secret sauce of who's going to be productive and who isn't, I mean, <laughs> please. please, like I would love to come attend your seminar. I, I would pay <laughs> thousands of dollars for your course. I mean, you know, a disc test isn't going to tell you whether or not they're going to do it at Enneagram like there's right. You know, so, you know, I think what you've got to have and I think this is going to be an important thing going forward. I think you've got to have a model that works for everybody. I've been right. talking with a lot of team leaders, a lot of broker owners across the country, and a lot of them have been saying things like, well, I only work with the ones that are truly committed. And that's yeah. great. I, I love that. But, you know, every transaction that that my team does, I make profit off of. Right. And I wish that every one of my agents was closing 20 plus deals a year. But, you know, if I hire somebody and they sell one house or three houses, I still make money on those one to three transactions. And so right. I think we just have to have a model and a game plan uh, for every type of agent to follow. If you're a one size fits all kind of team or a one size fits all kind of brokerage, I think you're going to really struggle going forward. So, so for me, it's not as much about trying to trying to find the exact type of agents that I, that I want to go for. It's about having the right playbook and the right system to plug these people into. And then it's my job during the interview process and during the onboarding process to figure out which path this person really, really needs to kind of go. And I think that'll be the really important thing going forward. You've got the agents that want to sell one to five homes a year. Those are the part-time agents and there is a place for them because they have the license. They want to work with their friends and, and they don't need to spend all the money marketing to try and generate business. And then you, and like any brokerage, cause we had this meeting, this topic at our meeting on Tuesday and you know, it's like the brokerages are either if you're not doing anything, they're cutting. And, you know, maybe those guys needed some more help that they weren't providing. So how can we help those people? But then you also, any business, you have the 80% or the 80-20 the rule. You have the 20% on top that are selling 30 plus homes a year. The middle 60 that are selling, you know, say 5 to 20 a year. And then you have that bottom at every company that's got that, you know, the bottom five. If you're talking 30 agents. Um, or or 100 that bottom 20 percent that is not selling anything or struggling so it's like how do i help them get into that middle funnel or how do i help them out yeah yeah i mean i think you always you know you want to look at your top third your middle third and your bottom third and you know the 
the biggest room for improvement is to take that bottom third and get them up into that middle third, right? Yeah. Um, but I think one thing that we also kind of forget about, you know, that that bottom third, the part time agents that you mentioned, the ones that are going to do one to five deals a year, they're probably never going to be full time in the business. Uh, one thing I think that that's really important to realize is that those kind of agents, they don't have a Facebook friends list full of licensed real estate agents usually. <laughs> so you actually you you might get, you know, them in and they're a one to five transaction type agent. But they might see that they're, you know, one of their friends might see that they sold three houses. They might be really happy about the three that they sold. And you might end up getting, you know, one of those middle tier or top tier agents because their friend said, hey, they I've always wanted to do it. And so and so did it. If they can do it, I can do it. So, yeah. so I, I like bringing in, you know, part time agents. I, I mean, I want all of them to transition from part time to full time. But I just I just think the more agents you have out there. Um, the more people you have playing for you. And, and I would just caution anybody on here to be very careful about cutting an agent loose because of production. Um, because when they leave you and they go to their next brokerage, they become a walking billboard against you. They, right. they say, oh, Phil, Phil was a jerk. He treated me like <laughs> crap. I hate, I hate first class real estate. I would never go back to them. I just, you know, they don't get the, they don't get the true story when they leave. Um, you know, but I think another thing that's important to realize, we talked about getting them like getting the bottom third into the middle third, getting the middle third into the top third. You know, it's, it's just really, really hard, um, maybe even impossible to motivate people that aren't motivated. Right. Uh, but what I do know, too, is that motivation can change. And your bottom third, we've seen this, too, the last couple of years, you know, had an agent that was in the bottom third of the company. And all of a sudden they had a life change and whether it was a, a divorce or a financial issue that they were going through or uh, wherever the case may be. And they now uh, something in their life caused them to now take real estate more serious. And they became a, you know, a middle third or even a top third uh, in the company. You're also going to have some of your top third of the business that, that they're going to get burnt out or they're going to get distracted. They're going to decide they want to flip houses and do rentals and work <laughs> with investors. And, and they're going to do that. And then they're going to kind of go from the top third down to the middle third. And so, you know, you as the team leader, you as the broker owner, you, you just, you can't predict who's going to do what and when people are going to change. So I just think the more agents you have, the better off you are. And then you just got to facilitate, uh, you know, that environment and that culture for them to move up if, if they really, really want to. But I don't think it should really be your goal or your job to get everybody into the middle third or the top third, because I think if you do that, you'll end up getting yourself pretty burnt out and pretty frustrated. No, and I, I completely take on everything you're saying there. I mean, I guess like for us, we've got, I mean, for me personally, if I see someone's not committed, then, you know, to us, then it's going to be a different conversation. If mm -hmm. they're struggling with us and they're committed to us, they're coming to everything, they're in the classes, they're showing up to the trainings and stuff. Then it's a sit down to say, okay, what is the the problem here? Why you know why are you not picking this up? Maybe the business isn't right for you, or maybe it's just like that life moment that all of a sudden something changed, and all of a sudden now they are in that middle third. And so yeah. we had one who we were talking with, and she just was disengaged with everything. Come to find out, they're getting divorced, and you know that is a life moment. So she had to step take a step back from the business and yeah. you know go do something else while she goes goes through this. Because it's not, I mean, because you've got to make money. And if you're not, and we're in sales, and if we're not picking the phones up, we're not making money. Yeah. Um, you know, get through your your scenario, whatever you have going on, and then dive in. Waiting for the kids to get out of school so I can dive in full time. Or you know, right now is the summer. Um, yeah. You know, so it's like we're, we're playing with the kids all day. Like, which what's going on? You know, it's hard to be, you know, fully active. A lot of the moms, especially like my wife, she's with the kids today. So it's hard for her to go, you know, dive into the business today. Yeah. 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 I agree. And, you know, yeah, pe people, you know, are going to do what they're going to do. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just think the more agents you have, the more you can hang on to. I mean, it really, uh, if an agent's not coming to training, uh, if they're not costing you money. Right. You know, then to me, like that, that's their decision that they're not yeah. coming to training. You know, that's just the numbers like, game there. That's right. Yeah. It really just is a numbers game. You know, if I've got 50 listings on the market, even if we, turn into a down market. I've got a better chance of selling more houses if I have 50 listings than if I have 10. Right. And, uh, so I think we just got to be really, really, really careful about letting folks go uh, based simply on production. I do agree 100% with what you said, though, about if they're just not committed. You yeah. know, if they're, if they're coming to training, if they're wanting to be successful and it's just not clicking for them, 
man, if they're willing to put in the work, I will go above and beyond to try to help them. But if you're not coming to training, if you, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, you'll get this from time to time, you'll have an agent you hadn't seen in two or three months. All of a sudden they'll call or text you and they'll say, Hey man, I really need to get some time on your schedule. Yeah. Well, how about you come to training first? Come to training. Right. Through, come, come to our Monday morning training three weeks in a row. And then we'll, we'll do a one-on-one session from there. Well, you know, that's like the half the stuff they're training, asking. We just yeah. talked about. Yeah. If you, if you can't come to what the group is already doing, yeah. Then why am I going to spend one-on-one time with you when when I could be spending it with one of our people that's here every week? You know, right. So right. Th- those are kind of the hard conversations that you, that you got to have, and uh, and you know, but if they're if they're part time, they're a good culture fit. They're not costing you money. They're not costing you time. I w- I would just suggest you know trying to figure out how to keep those folks because we got folks here as well that don't really do a whole lot of production. But man, every time an agent joins here, every time an agent has a closing. Every time an agent hits a milestone in their career, they're the biggest cheerleaders in our company. Yeah. And they're just and great to have in the office. Like, I wish yeah. they sold more, but they're just good people. And I think we've got to be careful not to make low production, you know, equal. They're a bad person because I think there's a lot of really, really good people. Maybe they're just not great real estate producers. And we got to figure out how to draw the line on that, too. As well, and not everybody wants to sell 100 homes a year or 30 homes a year. They're happy with 10. If I close one a month and I'm, you know, average commissions 10, 10 grand, you know, after taxes, I'm making 60, 70,000 a year doing pretty good. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I would just say, just be careful as a leader, yeah. you know, not everybody on your team is going to be as driven as you are, and, yeah. but that's why they need you. That's why they right. need somebody like you. If we were all just driven and, and wanting to get after it, then there'd be no need for team leaders and brokers and Correct. coaches and trainers and all that kind of stuff. So, so what is your secret sauce to bringing in or finding those three to five agents? Yeah, so I, I think you know when I when I first started my brokerage, uh, and there, you know there's probably you know a variety of people on here that are running teams, or running brokerage models. You know, I truly believed that I had the best thing out there you know, <laughs> for, for agents in my area. And there's a good chance if you're in a leadership position like that, you probably believe you've got the best splits, the best fees, the best training, the best admin support, the best technology, uh, and and maybe you do. But I think what we've got to be careful when it comes to recruiting. Uh, already existing agents. That's where I'll start with is is recruiting those agents that are already in the business. You know, you start making phone calls, sending out texts, telling them about all this kind of stuff. You're going to find real quick agents just start seeing you as another salesperson. Mm-hmm. You're no different than the Zillow salesperson, the Realtor.com salesperson that's trying to sell them zip codes. Um, that's just how they see you. So I think what you got to to, to do as a recruiter, if you really want to recruit at a high level. Um, and, and really have a painless, uh, you don't want to be, you know, I don't know about y'all, but like, I don't want to be like begging people to come join my company. Right. You know, um, if I've got to drag them in the door, I'm probably gonna have to also drag them to get them to training and do the things we're going to do. Like I want them to come because they've decided this is a good business decision. Yeah. Um, so it's a real simple concept. Start coaching your competitors, agents better than they are. And okay. are you inviting them to your events that you're having? And how are you doing that without looking like a salesperson, if that's the case? Yeah, we, we, we do that. That's actually our number one way of recruiting agents. We do a Monday morning mastermind meeting every other Monday. Okay. Um, and if we've got an agent that we've done a deal with or an agent that's uh, that, that, that we like, you know, we'll ask our agents from time to time, who would y'all like to have here in the room with you? We'll just simply, you know, hey, why don't you come to our Monday morning mastermind and just be a fly on the wall? That meeting is for our agents. We're not we're not doing a dog and pony show. Right. It is for our agents. But what better way for an agent to experience what it would be like to come work for you than to let them sit in on it one day? Right. Um, so so that's that's what we do. We do we also do that with people that are thinking about getting in the real estate business. You know, we we do a lot of recruiting with people that are unlicensed that have never sold before, and and we've got a really good training program uh, set up for that. Um, you know, you might not want to go that route unless you do have the time and the systems in place to to train a newbie like that. But but a lot of our best agents right now, we're not even in the real estate business a year or two ago. So when we have somebody that's thinking about getting in real estate, well, hey, before you before you commit to paying for the class and studying, why don't you just come to our Monday morning mastermind and just kind of see behind the curtain of our real estate company and and see if this is really what you want to do or if, or if it's an existing agent I'm recruiting. You know, I'll just tell them straight up, hey, every team leader, every broker owner you talk to is going to tell you they got the best stuff, the yeah. best training, the best coaching, the best uh, admin support, the best technology. How do you know unless you get to kick the tires a little bit? So, 
you know, so why don't you just come to our meeting, see what you think, you know, you'll either think that this is, you know, where you need to be, or maybe you'll decide we're a bunch of weirdos and, and you don't want to come work for us either way, you know, you've at least kicked the tires and kind of got to see that. So I think that's, that's a very, very, very easy way um, to, to get into production. And then from there, you know, just become the plan B for the agents in your area. You know, these agents that you are interacting with, that you're doing deals with, that you're seeing in the MLS, most of them didn't wake up today thinking about where they need to transfer their license or where they need to move from there. They're thinking, how do I get this deal closed? How do I, how do I increase my lead conversion on my Facebook ads? Um, and so when you call them, when you reach out to them, you, you know, if you go guns blazing from day one, well, next time you call them, they're going to see your number pop up and they're going to say, man, that field guy, he's just always trying to recruit me. He's, that's all he does. He's just a recruiter. Um, and again, like that, it's just hard to recruit when people see you that way. But if you're the kind of person that provides value to them, uh, then it becomes a whole different game plan. So very simple script to use, uh, you know, when, you, when you're reaching out to them. Um, big fan of John Cheplak. That's where I heard the script at first. Um, but it's just real simple. You know, if I was calling you, Todd, hey, Todd, I know you got a good thing going on over at EXP. Probably not looking to make a move, but, you know, just want to let you know over at First Class, we're looking to take on great people like you. And if you ever need a plan B, I'd love to be your plan B brokerage. Yeah. I'd love to be your plan B team. So I'm, I'm acknowledging that they've got a good thing going where they're at, that they're not looking to make a move. I'm not wanting to set an appointment to show my model today. That's going to happen later down the road. Right. Um, you know, but that's not going to happen on the first conversation. Um, and then from there, I've got to continue like, you know, making some little drips, making some deposits of value to them. That can be an email drip campaign. I've, I've got a 560 day, you know, email drip campaign for recruiting. <laughs> I'll be glad to send to anybody that, that will reach out to me. I can send it to you in an email. Um, you know, a uh, drip that's, campaign. that's a huge thing right now there. Cause it's, uh, it's kind of like our online leads. What's our follow up look like? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and recruiting is just lead lead generation yeah. and lead follow up. That's all it is. It's, yeah. you know, you're, you're recruiting buyers and sellers right now. If you're in the, in the, in the industry, then you go to recruiting agents, then you go to recruiting business partners, you know, like the whole thing is just lead generation all the way yeah. through. Um, you know, so you got to follow up with them. You got to provide value. Um, uh, you know, they've got to see you as a leader that can get them to the next level. Um, you know, maybe go grab coffee with them and just talk about their business again, like your splits, your fees, your technology, like that should be one of the last things you ever talk about. Like they should almost want to come join you regardless of what those things are. Right. Um, well, that's, that means you provide enough value in your conversations that they don't care about that. That's right. They just see you as, Hey, like, I'm sure the splits and fee, I mean, it's, it's gotta be reasonable, right? I yeah. mean, you just can't go rip agents <laughs> off. Uh, but like, it should be to the point where they just say, you know what feels the kind of guy that, that I need to be around feels the kind of guy that can get me to the next or his company or his yeah. business model. Uh, you know, a, as you kind of removed yourself from the day to day somewhat, I mean, I'm, I've got a manager that runs my office. Um, she's the one that does all the recruiting here for us today. And, you know, so now it's just more about we've got a good system to plug them into. Right. Um, you know, but in the beginning it was, you know, hey, Phil's the guy that I need to go work with, you know, and 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 your secrets that you think that you've got that you don't want to let everybody else know. Those are the things if you share those with agents over coffee, over a video chat, uh, over a lunch. Those are the kind of things that will get agents to come join in with you. Um, so don't be afraid to to share your secrets, you know, come from a place of contribution and. And maybe they'll take some of that stuff and 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 put it to use. And maybe six months from now, they'll say, hey, you told me to do that when we had coffee. I did it. It's working. It's great. I am not real happy where I'm at right now. Let's let's talk about making a move over to your company. So one of our uh, guys right now is in a, um, it's a role play, um, the weekly calls that they're doing with role play. And he's having conversations with them, helping with their business. And, and he's actually attracting agents to his team through just doing that. And they started the brokerage conversation. Like, you know, I don't like my broker. Something happened. He goes, all right, let's, let's have a conversation. Let's bring it over. Cause he's providing value to them. And I love that part. And you're coming from contribution. You know, it's like the give, 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 and then ask for something in return. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's just the way you sell today. You give value first for yep. free, you know, and then you, you, once you've given value, now, when you make that phone call, you know, you've, you've provided some value to them. Now, when you make that phone call, you know, hey, like there, there's almost like the law of karma or the law of reciprocity. Right. So so you imagine like some, an agent walks into our Monday morning mastermind 
they're not walking in there if they felt like their current team or their current brokerage was fitting all their needs, right? Like if they felt like they were getting everything they needed, they wouldn't even walk in the door to come to our right. Monday one meeting. So they come on Monday morning, you know, um, I thank them for coming. There's no sales pitch in that meeting at all. It is strictly a meeting for our agents. They're just getting to experience it. But then on Tuesday or Wednesday, you know, hey, give them a call. Hey, thank them for coming to the meeting. You know, hey, you know, thanks for coming. You know, what did you think about it? Blah, 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 blah. You know, I talked with a couple of my agents. You know, they, they seem to interact with you and and they think pretty highly of you. And And again, like I know you're probably not looking to make a move, but but when would be a good time for us to get together and just look at what it would what it would look like for you to come join our team over here? Again, you can ask that question then because you've provided value first. You right. can't you can't make that initial phone call and say that. At least I don't think. I mean, I guess, well, well, you've already given, so now you're asking. So it's that's the whole idea. Yeah, you've yeah, provided you value. You yep. you made a deposit with them, and now you're yeah. just taking that deposit out of the bank. So yeah. let me ask you this: So you're um, I like the go, going after the new agents before they've already got their license. So how are you finding their information? Are you just running ads for, hey, thinking about getting in real estate? You know, check us out. Yes, yes, and yes. Yeah, we, <laughs> we do. Uh, yeah, I mean, li literally, I, I, I texted, you know, we have an affiliate link with the CE shop. I would highly recommend anybody who's in a recruiting position to go set up a, an affiliate link with some kind of online school where you can send okay. people to your link and, and you'll get a cut of whatever, you know, course gets sold through your link. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we run ads. Uh, we have YouTube videos about how to get your license in Alabama, how to get your license in Texas, how to get your license in Tennessee. Uh, and, and believe it or not, like we recruit agents off of YouTube. They, they're, they're looking for information about how to get yep. licensed. And here I am, I pop up and it's got a link to my, my affiliate link uh, where they can sign up for, for the CE shop pre-license course. And when they do, I get an email, I get a, you know, with their, with their contact info. And it's just real simple. Hey, I saw that you signed up for the course. Why don't you come check out one of our Monday morning masterminds? Like, I hope you realize like the whole goal of this whole recruiting thing is let's, let's get them to an in-person meeting. Yeah. Whether they're new, whether they're experienced, whether they're a struggling agent, like let's just get them in the room because we found that 50% of people that come and sit in one of those meetings ends up joining our company. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, we, we reach out to people we know. Um, I sent a, a link to my team leaders this morning um, because there's a 50% off promo code today on the CE shop. <laughs> I just sent them this morning, easy Facebook messenger or text recruiting script quote. Have you ever thought about getting into the real estate business? I, it's really yep. that simple. Most people have thought about getting in real estate and they just need somebody to kind of nudge them in that direction. And uh and you'd just be surprised how how easy it is to get some of those people that they've always thought about doing it. They've seen other people do it. But now that their friend or somebody they respect or somebody they see as successful in the industry is reaching out to them directly. Well, hey, I've always thought about doing this. Maybe I should do it now. Um, so, yeah, you can even, uh, you know, job postings. You can go to job posting websites and post free job postings and, and respond to the people on there. I mean, there's all kind of ways to recruit new agents. I'm surprised we're getting stuff. We use wise hire for our ads and I've never thought about going on indeed as an agent looking for a buyer's agent position, but we get a lot of people from that. Yeah. Yeah, we do too. I've actually got a friend that recruits 15 to 20 agents a month strictly off of indeed. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, man, he's in a huge metropolitan area and yeah. they're doing like, you know, 10 or 15 free job postings a day. Like it's pretty yeah. cumbersome, but I mean, well, it, and that's, I think you've got to have the attention out there because the job postings, once you post like with wise hire, I got to refresh it about every week to two weeks because after yeah. 30 days it's at the bottom and it's like Craigslist, but you've got to be out there constantly posting to stay fresh and relevant like your real estate ads. You know, they need to be constantly refreshed to be, you know, at the top of the, the Google juice. Yeah. I mean, re recruiting agents, I think that the overall, the big takeaway, you know, you know, if, if you've had any success at all with working with buyers and sellers, well, just take what worked with finding buyers and finding sellers and yeah. just adapt those same strategies over to recruiting people. And it's the exact same thing. Like, like there's probably not a whole lot of agents having success calling for sell by owners on day one, they put the sign in the yard and getting the right. Listing month in, right. It's a, it's a two or three or four week follow up. Right. Uh, but but we get in the real estate business as a team leader or as a broker. And we just think because we've we've opened up and we've got the best thing mm -hmm. going that we think we can just call agents and get them to swap over on one phone call, one interaction. I just I just don't think that really works. 
Um, I I have people sign up that way, but they leave just as fast. Yeah. And so yeah. I'd rather have them where I've got to work a little bit harder to get the person to join our team or brokerage. And then I know they're more committed because they've, they've dove in, asked more questions, understood the process, understood what they're getting into versus, okay, I'm ready to sign. Where do I go? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're the, those are the first ones to bail on you. They're the first yeah. ones to quit. So yeah, we've seen since we started having them come and attend our weekly sales meeting, um, you know, the, the quality of people we've gotten has gone way up. We've been able to get agents into production so much quicker because they kind of know, like, this is what it's going to be like when I get in the business. Yeah. Like, I'm, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to actually talk to people. You right. know, you know, they just they just think it's HGTV and it's just they're just out showing houses. <laughs> you have three all houses to look at, yeah. and you you got to pick from one of those three. If you don't like them, sorry, you know, you're out. It's yeah. not that it's not that reality. Yeah, they never they never think about the fact is how do you get that buyer to pick you when they've got thousands right. of agents to choose from, right? You know, and so and those are things they're exposed to when they come to these, you know, sales meetings that we that we have. So, yeah, you you know, in the beginning, you know, if you're if you're just starting to grow a team or just starting to grow a brokerage, you're probably just wanting to get anybody you can. But but you kind of realize, you know, at least I did fairly early into it. Like I really the way that I really find good people is by letting them kind of test drive this thing. And it should be just as much as I'm selling uh, them on why they should do it. And they should also be selling me on why I should partner with them. Like it should yeah. be a, it should be a business partnership. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be me saying, come join over here and you're going to get this and you're going to get this and I'm going to do this for you. And we're going to do this for you. And our team's going to do this. It should be very equal. It should, it should be, yes, I am going to do those things for you, but then what are you willing to commit as well? Yeah. And that all starts during the recruiting process. I mean, it is a we business because we are in business together. And whenever I have a team member with me on an appointment, I say, this is my business partner because they are a partner in the in the business because yeah. if they don't win, I don't win and they're not employees. So yeah. um, we, we treat each other. Everyone is partners because we want to make sure that they're, they're ingrained into this business as much as we are and they're committed to it. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to treat these agents like their business partners, not like their clients They're not yeah. like their customers. Yeah. It, it's, if, if not, you have a bunch of people saying me, 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 I need more. I need more. Yeah. You're not doing enough. And, yep. uh, and, and that's not the kind of culture you want to have for your Correct. team. Either. That's going to be a, that's going to be a challenge, especially when you're inviting people into your sales meetings and they're seeing all that me, me, me stuff. And that's not the vibe you want to put out there when you're when you have brand new people who are not with you yet. And you're trying to sell the culture to them about why they should join you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, Question I have for you now that you've got the agents in. I mean, I love everything you've talked about, you know, just kind of breaking it down. You're going after a lot of the job postings. Um, would love to see the, the recruiting scripts because those are great. That's hard to come up with that stuff. And then you're going after the season to end new agents. You're basically anybody who wants to sell, we're going to find a way to help you out. Now, what are you doing once you get those newer agents in to help get them, you know, basically started? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have, uh, we have a, uh, you know, like most teams and most brokers do, we have an onboarding process they have to go through. Uh, it's a mixture of, um, of some online classes that we've created uh, with, you know, a skills test at the very end. So they've got to, they've got to watch about eight hours worth of videos and they've got to go through a skills test where they're, they're showing us how, you know, to log into these things, how to find certain documents, how to, how to schedule a showing, you know, inside the MLS, how to open up an electronic lockbox and, you know, just basic beginner stuff. But, you know, we've also seen too that people have said they've watched the videos and they come in for their skills test and it's very obvious they hadn't, you know, or that's, maybe they, yeah, that's or the maybe key right there. The, yeah. Maybe they had the videos playing in the background while they were watching Netflix or something. Right. You know? right. Um, so, so the onboarding process is really, it is a chance for us to show them the basics of what it takes to get started but it's also an opportunity for us to figure out like, who are we dealing with here? Are they going to be right. bottom third, middle third, top third? And, right. and how do we respond to them accordingly? Um, but, but then from there um, we pair them up with an advisor agent. Um, that advisor agent gets a, a, a percentage of that agent's commission for every deal they do their entire time they're with us. So okay. um, kind of almost like we're putting them, you know, in their downline, essentially we don't, right. You know, we don't really have that kind of model uh, in, in first class, but but we give them just a simple 5% referral fee on everything that that agent does. And now that agent that's that's their advisor is the one going on appointments, helping them write offers. And they do that for their first two closings. After that, they're, they're kind of on their own, not to say that they're on their own, but they, they're right. expected to, to be they able to know how to, write an offer, yeah. how to get their stuff into our transaction management system, 
Um, you know, at, at that point, they, they've seen it the right way the first two times, and they ought to be able to do it for number three, number four, number five, you know, so on and so forth. Um, but we provide them with a 30-day action plan, and we sit down before they get started, and we, we go over that 30-day action plan, and then I check in with them personally one-on-one -on -one at the 30-day mark, the 60-day mark, and the 90-day mark. And there's, you know, they agree how many leads they're going to put into their CRM, how many appointments they're going to go on in their first 30 days, um, you know, um, how many hours of, you know, podcast CE, what they're going to do, how much they're going to rehearse, uh, you know, their documents that they've got to go over. If they had a buyer or a seller, do you even know how to explain the documents? Right. That you would for them. So at the at, at those 30 day, 60 day, 90 day check ins, we'll randomly pull out a buyer agency agreement or. Uh, you know, hey, go over, you know, go over paragraph nine of our sales contract with me. That's for us in our local area. That's where it talks about inspections, um, you know, and I'm 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 quizzing them. You know, I, yeah. I want to see how, how committed you are to this. You know, those are basics that you should at least be able to get through if you've been in the business for 30 days. Well, it's um, funny. We're doing coaching with Brent right now on some stuff, and um, he is not answering my questions, meaning or his questions that he's asking me. And yeah. it's smart the way he's doing it because he's asking, so what do you guys want? And normally I'm thinking like, or like whatever the question is, I'm trying to get an answer out of him to help me understand the question. So I can say, yeah, that's what we want to do. No, you're waiting for them to answer like the inspections. I get, I would interrupt them and say, yeah, this is what it is. And then they still don't understand. So you have to sit and like, wait for them to answer. I like what you're doing there, picking certain things out and they need to have studied it. That's right. Yeah. I mean, this, if you're going to be a professional, you know, you got to, Study and you know, uh, NFL football players they practice thirty hours a week for a game. Right. It's gonna be three hours, you know. Right. And then they watch tape and they work <laughs> out, you know, for for a game that's gonna last three hours. Uh, but yet, you know, we've got about thirty pages worth of documents that we use for buyers and sellers every day. Yeah. And we have agents that don't even look at them until it's time to do it. Um, yeah. And they tumble it's not through just it. Have, on the blank. <laughs> yeah, and they have they have no confidence on how to explain it. They don't don't really know what they're doing. Um, and so we actually found that like agents who go over that stuff and understand those documents have confidence and confidence yep. is what sells more than yep. anything. Um, so, so we, we do those kind of things. Um, and then, you know, usually at the 90 day mark is where we're having that conversation of, you know, Hey, ha where do we go from here? You know, you told me you're going to do this many number of, of contacts into your CRM. You only did this many, you know, you told me you were going to, you know, or maybe it's, hey, you, you put the number of contacts in, but you didn't get the number of appointments. So we've got to have data to look at to know where to coach them on. And if if we don't have data to look at, then we we don't know. They might be great at setting the appointments, but they might not be very good when they go on the appointments. They they might uh, do good on the appointment they go on, but they're just not getting enough appointments. We don't know that until we have data. And so, you know, those are those are things we look at. And so that night, that first 90 days, I think, is really crucial. Uh, to any agent that we hire, whether they're new, whether they're experienced. And, uh, you know, we want to give them the best shot possible. And, and you know, the ones that don't make it here, um, sometimes they just go inactive or sometimes they go to another company, another brokerage. And, you know, they kind of do the same thing there for six months and they go inactive there. Like we, we're not losing people. Like we don't have people leave here and go to another company and all of a sudden do great over there. Like we give yeah. you the best shot possible. Uh, to, to be successful. And, and if, if, you know, we'd rather, we'd rather find out in the first 90 days that this is not going to work than stretch this thing out over a year or two year period. So, well, that's one, one of the challenges we've had is, you know, we, I've, I've put my director of ops on this where she's onboarding them. And I just came back and I said, we, you know, we need to, and she's going through the 90 days with them. I'm like, I need to check in at 30, 60, 90 or 45 and 90 with them myself personally to see how things are going and how we can help them more. Um, cause I feel like you get checked out of it and they're like, who is Todd Schroth? And yeah. so if you're engaged, they're going to still be more engaged into the process. But, and you know, when you have agents leave the team because they weren't engaged during this, not that I want to, you know, you, I don't want to say you want to see people fail, but like, Hey, it wasn't me. That was the problem. That's and right. that's what I think it's like when we see them inactive or they, you know, they leave the team cause they want to do it on their own. And it's been six months or 12 months and they haven't sold a single house. Like if you're complaining about giving me a commission split. And you want to do it on your own for the hundred percent and you still don't get it. So, you know, where, where's the problem lie? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really important. To, you know, and everybody that we've ever, you know, hired that didn't work out, um, you know, whether they, they stayed with our company until they went inactive or they 
went somewhere else and kind of failed there. Like we knew, like we, we've gone line by line to each one of them in the last year. And like, we knew within 30 days, whether or not they were going to make it or not. Yeah. Right. Like, like it's so critical to hit the ground running fast. And we know within 30 days, whether or not these people are going to make it or not. Um, you know, but at the end of that, not at, at that 90 day mark, you know, we're not, we're not having that conversation to say, Hey, we're not going to work with you anymore. But it's like, Hey, at this point, do you really need more coaching or do you really just need to start taking action on the coaching you've already received? Like we've given you a business plan and, and I yeah. love that you just, I love that you just said that, uh, what you said just a minute ago, you know, is it that our business plan doesn't work? You know, the one that we gave you, or is it that right. you're just not doing the action plan? You know, and I think that's an important thing for somebody that's in a team leader or a broker owner to realize, like, you know, if you could only give your, your agents one thing over the next 12 months, you know, which one would make the bigger impact more coaching, more training on new things or actually holding them accountable to do the things you've already taught them to do. And I think your number two is they're holding more accountable because, like, right now, I, I was saying this to somebody else last week. I I feel like our phone is going to start ringing like crazy, or if it hasn't already done that, of people trying to sell us more leads, more leads, more leads. And it's not that we need more leads; we need to focus on the ones we already have. And you know, this new product is going to help you stay in touch with your database more. This new product is going to help you get in front of for sale by owners automatically. This new product is going to do this, et cetera. And it's not what it is. Old school is still going to work. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the, the biggest thing, you know, for a while as a team leader, as a broker owner, we kept trying to give more training and more strategies. And and I just kept thinking, man, if I can just, you know, if I can just get, you know, so and so agent over here to just do this one strategy. here, yeah. What I realized was like I actually was probably doing the opposite. I probably was paralyzing them by giving them too much to think about. Yeah. And we finally had a point earlier this year where we just said, hey, guys, like, We've get like if we never did another training on anything new ever, y'all have tons and tons of training on things that already work, you know, but nobody's doing it. You know, right. y'all, you know, video CMAs is a big thing that we teach. That's a big part of our 30 day action plan, you know. And so I asked in that meeting, like, who in the last week has sent out a video CMA? No, out of a room of 40 something people, <laughs> nobody had done. It. I was like, so the video CMAs not work, yeah, or are y'all just not doing it? Like, like, come on, guys. Like, I, I've given you the the, the roadmap here. You've got to do the work to follow it, you know? <laughs> well, that's what we just talked about yesterday was, like, the um, home anniversaries. Um, one of the trainings that the locker room had yesterday or Tuesday was the, um, uh, God, the one-year yeah, review, the the home uh, the appraisal review. And I was like, guys, for now, what we're going to start doing is giving you guys, you know, if we're selling four houses a month, there's no reason why you can't do four CMAs a month for your past clients so they can see what their annual check-in is going to be. And that's like the video CMA is do it on video and email it to them and mail it to them. So they yeah. get it. Yeah. So it's just another point of contact with the people. Yeah. So, so. I think that's a big thing. You know, I, I think, um, you know, um, it, it can be frustrating as a team leader, as a broker to, cause, cause you just think, right. Like, like, Hey, I, I figured out what works and it worked for me when I was selling and, yeah. and I'm just going to share it with y'all. And uh, of course y'all are going to follow it. Right. Cause it works. Yeah. It's not, nope. not quite that easy, right? So <laughs> no. Uh, so yeah, I think that's one of the big struggles of being a team leader and a broker. Yeah. Too, so well, yeah, we've done it for 22 years, and things things that have worked, we've already tried everything, so we know what works and what doesn't work for us. And you may not like the way we do the video CMA, so tweak, tweak it a little bit to you. But you got to get on video. You've got to get out in front of the people. I had to ask our team at the meeting. I said, so what can we do to help you guys further this year? And when I was like, well, I want more social content to put on your story. So I asked three of them, hey, if we wanted to elevate your stories a little bit more, how about we go live on your stories? No, no, no. I just want like images. I'm like, no, you got to go on and create content. People who want to see who you are. And they don't care if you have your baseball cap on when you just finished playing tennis or whatever. That's you being real. Yeah. So, well, Phil, I really appreciate you jumping on here today. We've we've gone long, and you know you've got a lot of good content. Um, if someone is in your markets, what markets are you serving? So right now we've got offices uh, in in the West Alabama market, Tuscaloosa. Uh, we've got uh, Jackson, Tennessee, Leesburg, Virginia, Dallas, Texas, uh, Pensacola, Florida. Um, you know, so we're we're we're, we're kind of looking to expand uh, more and more and more, but. Uh, you know, I'm easy to find on Facebook. Uh, again, you know, I've got those drip campaigns. And and if recruiting is something you're interested in, you know, if you go to freedom-builders.net, freedom-builders.net, I created a totally free, no upsell coaching course. I don't sell coaching. You can't hire me as a coach. I don't do that. 
Um, but it's a totally free recruiting uh, course that I created that has all the scripts, all the dialogues, all the ways that we recruit agents and how we've we added 96 agents to our team in the last 12 months. Um, you know, so if that's something you're interested in. You want more information about uh, about recruiting agents. Um, just go to freedom-builders.net and uh, take advantage of those free videos that are out there right now. So it's freedombuilders.net. I've got it scrolling at the bottom of the, sh uh, the screen there. Yep. Um, so that's good. I, that's that's a nice takeaway from this. And you are in a lot of states and a lot of cities, so that's a lot to handle. But you're close enough. You got them all in the, like a narrow, um, I want to say, time zone to keep people rolling. So that's good. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the key is just finding the leader. You know, that's the only thing that's ever yeah. held us back from expanding even further is just finding – somebody we felt comfortable that, you know, could run our model and run our playbook that'd be coachable and, and that was bought into what we were doing. You know, it's, it's hard to, hard to motivate somebody who's not already motivated. Right. So, right. Uh, you know, just finding those people and uh, you know, you go from, you know, right now, you know, recruiting buyers and sellers to recruiting agents, which is what we talked about. Eventually yeah. You get to a point where you're recruiting, you know, uh, business partners right. to, to keep expanding your thing. So it's, it's the exact same process and, uh, you know, the things that we've learned working buyers and sellers translated over to agents and now it's translated over into finding business partners. So it's, it's the same game. No, this is great stuff. I really appreciate being on here today. And guys, if you're looking to connect with Phil, check out Freedom Builders, freedom-builders.net for some free takeaways. And especially those drip campaigns, those are going to be awesome for those of us who are in the recruiting or attracting mode for our teams and brokerages. And man, I really appreciate this today. It was good stuff. Appreciate it, Todd. Happy birthday to you today, yeah, too. Thank man. you.